weapons charge. Hello and welcome back to Drama Investigator. Jeffree Star is being called out for some scary messages he sent to the owner of Dolls Kill amidst the controversy surrounding their brand at the moment. So Dolls Kill is a popular online boutique featuring a rebellious spirit and attitude. Well they were called out last week for a tone deaf post they had made surrounding the Black Lives Matter movement. The picture on their Instagram showed police officers outside one of their stores with the caption reading, direct action in its glory. And judging by the caption of this photo, it looked like the owner didn't know which side to support. So this is only the most recent in a pattern of disgusting behaviour. This post has ultimately destroyed the brand's reputation. Jeffree Star had actually private messaged them with regards to an Instagram story they had made about him, probably calling him out for his past. Sebastian Williams, a drama channel, was sent these scary screenshots which he exposed on his channel. In the messages, Jeffree says, You're such a stupid f***ing c Direct action is your disgusting and failing brand, finally burning to the ground. Hope you have a beautiful morning and get a rubber b to the middle of your f***ing head. Now, no one likes the brand Dolls Kill. No one's buying from them. They have a long history of being disgusting. But Jeffrey's response has really freaked people out. Like, why is he so aggressive? It's honestly scary. Yes, they deserve to be called out, but these messages could be seen as threats and could have some major legal consequences. It's important to note that this isn't the first time Jeffree Star has threatened a brand. He's also been known to threaten fans in the past too, from unprofessionally responding to complaining customers to threatening other beauty gurus with physical force. This aggressive behaviour has not changed over time and it's really worrying. Let's briefly delve into some examples of Jeffrey's repetitive aggressive behaviour. Back in 2016, Jeffrey had gotten into an argument with makeup Shayla, where he called her a c and threatened to beat her to the ground. Jeffrey and Shayla both attended an Urban Decay event in Las Vegas, where Jeffrey alleges that Shayla told another beauty influencer, Marielle, that she needed lip filler because her face looked deformed. Jeffrey apparently was so upset about this that he later took to Twitter and called Shayla names. Shayla denied the accusations, to which Jeffrey responded in an aggressive of tone all over Twitter. Make up Shayla, telling another female their face is disproportioned and being so disrespectful is a disgrace to every female on this planet. You said that word for word in front of everyone, so either stop drinking or remember what comes out of your mouth. Jeffree Star, you are making things up obviously for attention. You are being messy and disrespectful towards someone you don't even know. All these Instagram girls are all talk. I'll actually beat you to the effing ground and mean it. Shayla had replied, you should never be okay with or support a man that says he will beat up a woman. Now, why would a grown woman tell another grown woman something that disgusting and ugly unless she was an insecure rat herself? Also, in another throwback to one of Jeffree Star's walk tours in 2009, Jeffree roasted his fans on stage and told one of them they looked like they had autism. He also threatened to K-I-L-L -L an entire group of people. We ran out of time, you guys. That's our last song. I had to do community service for a few months because I had a felony weapons charge. If anyone ever touches my c again, I will beat your mother ass I her the out. If I see her again, I'm going to jail. You little bitch. Clearly this behaviour is still embedded in Jeffrey, but in a much more toned down form I guess you could say. So leading on from this, the controversy doesn't stop there for Dolls Kill with regards to their tone deaf Instagram post. So recently their store in LA got graffitied and no one's mad except the owner, Shoddy Lynn, who was going off on her Instagram story. Shoddy had also responded in many lengthy statements spread across her Instagram, apologising for her tone deaf post. On top of this, Shoddy had also made an Instagram video apologising. I am here today to apologize for the damage and the pain that my actions caused you, the Dolls Kill community. I did something that hurt people. This image was powerful and to me it represented a revolutionary moment in time. In the past, they've also sold fringed feather headpieces, titled Battle Feather Headdress, and a fringed benefits costume, all of which are extremely racist. And their response to a customer complaining about this was just awful. Hey doll, the last thing Dolls Kill would be slash represent is racist. 
podcast. We love and value individuality and originality. Our company was created to represent dolls of all flavors, colors, ideals, etc. We're here for the misfits, mislegits, and everything in between. I'm sorry if that costume offended you, but to call us right is pretty ridiculous. We're a brassy, sassy, stick it up your ass kind of company. Not for the easily offended norm culture. So take a chill pill and get your panties out of a bunch. Because it ain't that serious, cutie. XO, XO, Anna. XO. Less horrific things that they've done, but which is still problematic, include not doing returns or refunds, also reselling other brands for marked up prices, and having a very limited selection of sizes. And to top it all off, their models aren't diverse. Dolls Kill has had a consistent history of stealing other brands art. Artwork. Sugar Pill Clothing is a company that stole artwork from an artist called Bay Bad Girl and started reselling the artwork on clothing items that Dolls Kill actually stocked on their website. Despite Bay Bad Girl speaking up, nothing was done about this. Then two months after being called out for this, Dolls Kill then started selling more stolen designs, this time from an independent designer called Marielia. These screenshots show that Marielia sent line sheets of her swimsuit design last year to Dolls Kill, who were also at one point stocking Marielia's clothing. This here proves that Dolls Kill knew about her designs, so they can't claim that they didn't. Therefore, this design was stolen from Marielia. On top of all this, a huge amount of former employees have spoken out about their terrible experiences working with the company. Here was one complaint that pretty much sums up what the company is really like behind the scenes. An anonymous employee employee who is still actually employed had said, just stay away. Pros. Select group of people who are pleasant to be around. 50% discount. 20 word minimum for this box. Can't think of anything else. Cons. Just stay away at all costs. Insulting pay. Feels like high school. Corrupt owners and managers. Treated like garbage. Unless you would best buddies with the owner. And here is a review from a former employee. I worked at Dolls Kill full time more than a year. Pros. Co-workers are amazing people. The type that's hard to find anywhere else. You'll definitely meet lifelong friends here. Employee discounts is great if you're into what Dolls Kill sells. Cons. Effective pay rate. You'll have more dignity left working at your local Starbucks. You'll get more respect than the workers here. The work is monotonous and draining. You will not use much higher intellectual thought here, especially when you call customers babies and babe. Advice to management. Try and actually care about your employees. Talk to them like you actually care about their lives. Help them pursue their dream job and not force them into a vicious cycle of poverty. Have healthier snacks in the kitchen, more team bonding, better tech equipment. Have the CEO at least pretend to care about us. Even models who have worked for the company have spoken out against the horrific things that take place behind the scenes. I'd like what I say to be anonymous. Dolls from what I've personally experienced are transphobic, fat shamers, racist and art. They say they love everyone. And equality. Not true. My friend is a beautiful trans pre-op female. She was asked to go there and shoot some things, and things turned sour very quick. I don't know if this happened to the other trans models, but the staff while she worked were making mean and rude comments on how she isn't a woman. And they even pointed and laughed to each other while she took off her shirt. I had done a shoot there before as well, and they were making very offensive racist jokes. The stylist also tried to make jokes about me being fat because I wear corsets and how without it I'd probably be 300 pounds. They're terrible people and I'm glad it's coming out. Now the doll school owner has recently responded to a lot of the controversies that the brand has been in over the years. Here's what she had to say. The first issue I want to talk about is the goth is white t-shirt which we sold um, by the European brand WIA. Um, this shirt said on the front, goth is white. According to the brand, their intent was to say that goths can wear any color and not just black. That's not how it was interpreted. Um, the other issue I'd like to talk about is a Native American headdress, which we sold in 2014. This was a part of a much larger Halloween assortment. Um, it was culturally insensitive and inappropriate to sell. At the time, which is now more than six years ago, a customer service rep answered some complaints and one of them was answered pretty immaturely and it was pretty embarrassing. Companies are thankfully dropping Dolls Kill stock from their websites, and fans are boycotting the brand. I mean, when you get graffiti on your store in LA because customers hate you that much, it might be a sign to close the doors, or make some serious changes. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments.